Even though I've taught at the university for many years, we all know that the things that are really important, we don't learn at the university. The things that are important, we learn. And one of the things that many people learned is that the Khazars, a very powerful and significant nation in Central Asia, in the Middle Ages, had nothing better to do but to become Jews. I mean, they were dying to keep kosher and to observe the Sabbath. But that's what we're told they did. If we ask somebody where they know it, they would find it difficult to say. These are one of the things that we learned. Several years ago, actually it's more than several, maybe a little more than a decade ago, a professor at Tel Aviv University wrote an article and he said, I don't believe it. It never happened. I read the article. I was very surprised. And I waited for the great scholars to say something about this article. But they didn't. All quiet. So I decided to look at the facts. And I thought I would write a brilliant article to show where this person was wrong. And what happened was, he was right. I started looking into the stories about the Khazars. How do most Jews, I think, know about the Khazar conversion? Because there was a famous book of Jewish philosophy called the Kuzari, describing how the king of the Khazars discussed the religion with the rabbi, and he was convinced to convert. Most people haven't read the book, but they heard of the book. However, this book was written hundreds of years after the time that the Khazars were active, and you can't really rely on that book as a source. Those few people who were looking for information turned to an earlier source, and that is a correspondence between the king of the Khazars and a famous Jewish scholar and court official in Spain. Now, this is a beautiful text written in beautiful Hebrew. But most of the scholars who looked at this text had never taught high school. And if you teach high school and you get a beautiful paper with many words in Latin and Greek and French, you know one thing. The student did not write this paper. How is some Khazar chieftain spent most of his time fighting going to write a letter in beautiful Hebrew to a court, court official in faraway Spain. You have to be very, very cautious. You can say that perhaps he had a secretary who wrote the letter for him. But if you're off in the middle of the Khazar lands, which is now near the, uh, in the Caspian Sea, where are you going to find a secretary whose Hebrew is that beautiful? I don't think there are 100 people in Israel who could write today a letter that beautiful. There were people in Spain who did. And the minute you see something which is too good to be true, you have to wonder, is it true? If you look at the letter carefully, you see there are many, many problems with the letter. The, the person who wrote it, king or secretary or Spanish forger, knew a great deal about the part of the Khazar lands that were close to the, Medi to the Black Sea and to the Mediterranean. He knew very little about the other parts of the Khazar lands. The story itself claims that the Khazars converted to Judaism before there was a Khazar kingdom. If you check the dates, it happened so many years ago, it was before there was even a ruling group. So there are some real problems there. The biggest problem, though, is what does not exist. Great scholars like Maimonides 
make no mention of the Khazars, even though they would be very happy to have used the story as proof that Judaism is better than any other religion. The Byzantines, who had an alliance with Khazars and were cared about religion because they were Orthodox Christians, they had correspondence, they had sources, they had discussions. Not a word of the fact that the people they were dealing with were the people who may have crucified Jesus. Not a word, no explanation, no justification. The Georgian shore sources have nothing. Perhaps most critical is that the Babylonian Jewish community, which was very concerned about raising funds to support the institutions in Babylonia and had good contacts everywhere, never mention raising money or sending a delegation to bring money from this kingdom, which was not that far away from Babylonia. And if they would have had a kingdom that was Jewish, kept the Sabbath and kept the kosher laws, that would have been the first target to uh, attempt to reach to raise funds. We all know the joke, how do we know there are no Jews on the moon? because the Jewish fundraisers have never gone to the moon to bring money. And if there were Jews there, they would have been there. So what evidence do we have? The evidence, the main evidence that we have, aside from very problematic Hebrew sources, are Muslim historians who generally hated the Khazars for very good reasons, because the Khazars blocked the Muslim advance into Russia. And this is not, wasn't quite appreciated by the Varangians, but the Khazars did the dirty work that preserved Russian independence. But the Muslims had a lot of counts to settle with the Khazars, and being Jewish was certainly no compliment. However, when we look at the Muslim historians, Almost each one has a different story. When did it happen? Why did it happen? Who converted? How many converted? There are too many stories. They're all good. They're all very good stories, but there are too many stories. This is exactly what happens when you know one fact, they converted, and somebody says how, and each person who repeated the fact comes up with a story. But it's very difficult to have the stories match. That's why investigators always investigate witnesses separately to see if the stories match or not. Here, the stories do not match. So the big question is, why do so many people believe that the Khazars converted? The evidence is so problematic. The best sources say nothing about the Khazar conversion. So why is it believed? It's because things that people are told are very often accepted. And if you see the same story three times, you don't check, are those three times good sources? You say, everybody says it. And if everybody says it, it has to be true. One of the main services of the Nevzlin Center, with which I was associated in very ways, is that the goal is to be critical. Not to believe things just because somebody says it, but to examine the facts, to examine the reality, and then to come to conclusions on the, on the basis of sources and analytical thought. Here there's no, no, no room for fake news. What we are interested in, or what, till the degree I was involved, we were interested in was what was real, what actually happened. If you are interested in knowing more about the Khazars, and I just touched the tip of a long topic, please contact the Nevzlin Center. I have an article in English, I have an article in Russian, if you contact them, they will be happy to contact me and I'll be happy to send it to you.